Hello everyone, Joshua Myers here. And I'm Abe. I'm Jay. And Josh too. <laughs> Hello everyone, Joshua Myers here. And welcome back to my Jurassic Park franchise review series. Damn, it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, I did the last one, like I think, like the first movie, like when, like five months ago, something like that. Almost a whole year. Wait, actually, yeah, I think it was a year ago. Damn. I need to get. I need to do a better job of keeping on track with these review series. Uh, yeah, a lot has happened within a year. Um, so. That's probably why, uh, not just what's going on out there in the world, but uh, also stuff has happened in my personal life, you know, within this year. Um, so I've really been trying to get through these franchise review series. I, I'm i almost done with the Indiana Jones franchise review series. I just need to do Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Um, I completed the Star Wars franchise review series, finally, I just need to do, wait, actually, no, I actually already did my update ranking video, uh, so, yeah, I completed that, um, I completed my Spider-Man franchise review series, so, yeah, there's just a, quite a few franchise review series that I got done, and there's some I still need to get finished, I started this review series, like I said, about a year ago, also close to about a year ago, I think, like, five months ago or something like that. I started my Harry Potter franchise review series, so I need to get on that. Better late than ever. And today, the review I got for you guys is the second film in the Jurassic Park franchise, and that is the Lost World Jurassic Park from 1997. And now it's only a matter of time before this Lost World is found. They're still alive. Discover the wonder. Wow. Isn't it great? Experience the adventure. Not making the same mistakes again. You're making all new ones. As Universal Pictures takes you to a world you've never seen before. A Steven Spielberg film. The Lost World. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, May 23rd. The Lost World Jurassic Park stars Jeff Goldblum, Julian Moore, the late Pete Possibly. I think I pronounced that name right. If not, here it is. Vince Vaughn and it's directed by Steven Spielberg. The plot to The Lost World Jurassic Park is that this movie uh, t actually focuses on one of the secondary characters of the last movie who technically was the main character and that is Dr. Ian Malcolm portrayed by Jeff Goldblum who thinks he's uh, portraying himself although we'll get to that in my negatives. In which uh, John Hammond enlists him and a few other group of scientists and technologists and stuff like that to go to a second island that was never mentioned in the first film but was mentioned here called Site B, also known as Isla Sorna, to go and research the dinosaurs and Ian Malcolm refuses to do that, especially once he finds out that his girlfriend, uh, Sarah Harding, portrayed by Julian Moore, is on the island with the research team. So instead he decides to make this into rescue operation to get his girlfriend out of the island and into safety. But John Hammond's nephew, Peter Ludlow, has other plans and lets see you enlist hunters and engine workers to basically capture the dinosaurs and bring them over to the mainland to build a whole new park. And havoc erupts on the mainland of San Francisco. <laughs> visually really good, actually. Uh, it's still visually on, like, not on par as the original film, but it's damn close to it, I would say. And I like the new setting that it's purely a jungle-ridden place. The dinosaurs are free to roam around. There's no cages, no fences. I mean, there's some, but they're all abandoned and everything. I like that. I like the look of that, actually. Uh, speaking of look, I also like the look of the dinosaurs in this one, actually. From even stuff like we get since the animals in this case have been breeding and everything, have been foraging. We actually get some male and female variants of the animals, like for example the Velociraptor. I really dug the design of the male Velociraptors in this movie with the orange and tiger striped look. Like the orange skin and the tiger stripe pattern, that looks pretty cool. Also, I like we get tons more dinosaurs actually in this than even, I 
think the first movie? Hell, we even get two more T-Rexes. A male and female variant. Technically, we get three T-Rexes, which the male and female has a baby. We get to see a baby T-Rex for the first time in this movie. Yeah, and also there's other dinosaur, like dinosaurs, uh, like the Compsognathuses, which are new to this franchise at this point. They're kind of like the Dilophosaurus where they look cute and innocent at first and then they just go all vicious and happy and you're not expecting it. Also another thing I like is just in terms of looks, the cinematography. I love the cinematography in this movie. Not as good as, again the cinematography is in the first film but it's still Dean Cundey. He did an amazing job with the cinematography of this movie. I really dug the kind of darkness of this movie. It's not too overly dark to where you can't see anything like in some movies, but it's not too bright either because like, it's going for a darker look than the first movie. I also like the environment, you know, just how the island looks in this movie. It does look different from the first island at Isla Nublar and that's what they were going for and I think they did a great job with that. So it makes seem different locations from like Hawaii to the Redwood National Forest in California which is where they also filmed indoor for uh, Return of the Jedi fun fact. So yeah the cinematography is just great. The effects overall are really good. Not as good as the first movie's effects but still pretty good. Uh, I'd say this is the Jurassic Park film that has this, obviously the second best looking effects in the whole franchise for me, um, both with CGI and animatronics work, like any animatronic work. I mean, also, like, I do like the actors in this movie. I think the actors do a pretty good job of what they have to work with, to be honest. Uh, more specifically, uh, again, I do like Jeff Goldblum in this. Uh, yeah, this is still at the time where he doesn't seem that annoying in my opinion. Because uh, I'm not sure if you noticed, but after doing the first two Jurassic Park films, it seemed like he never wanted to leave that performance. So he just keeps on portraying the same type of characters in every movie he's in. He does the same type of performance and everything and just gets tiresome and just honestly, you know, you start to realize, hey, this performance is annoying. Not charming. Knock it off. Uh, which thankfully I, I noticed Jeff Goldblum seems to not be doing that anymore. He's really trying to now not do all of his Jeff Goldblum-isms <laughs> that he's done in the past. Like I was watching this uh, one Disney Plus show. It was like the world according to Jeff Goldblum and that. And honestly, I could tell he was really trying to do stuff like a, a not put too much ums in between sentences. Like, like... This is basically my Jeff Goldblum impression here. It's like, now you do intend on having dinosaurs uh, on this dinosaur tour, right? Hello? Hello? <sighs> yes? Uh, do you see the Tyrannosaur here uh, uh, doesn't obey set patterns or uh, the essence of chaos? That's my best Jeff Goldblum impression. Uh, so basically he does a lot of stuff. <laughs> and that's basically the type of role he's played for years. Like, like I remember he played the exact same character in uh, Independence Day, um, the first Cats and Dogs movie, which, yeah, he basically played the uh, same character and same performance, really, in a lot of those movies. So, it's nice to see that Jeff Goldblum is really trying to whip it shows like uh, the world according to Jeff Goldblum and that him to really try so hard. Well, we're not here to talk about that show right now. Well, I kind of went a little bit off topic, but we're here to talk about The Lost World, Jurassic Park. I thought all the other actors did pretty fine for the most part. They were serviceable, like uh, Julian Moore as uh, uh, Ian Malcolm's girlfriend, uh, Sarah Harding. Um, thought she was fine and everything, and in terms of acting wise, all the other actors were just Eh, just kind of, but nothing awful. Oh, another good one in this was a Pete Possley, the late, the late great Pete Possley. I think I'm pronouncing that name right. I may be butchering it. He was definitely a good actor in this movie. I just kind of wish there was more scenes with him, and there were. There were actually scenes that were cut from this movie, kind of even exploring more of his character in that. I kind of wish some of those scenes were in there. Actually, might have helped the movie actually. He's great, you know, he passed away. I'm not sure how long ago it was, but he did pass away, unfortunately. I don't know 
power why he passed away, but it is unfortunate. He was a great actor, so I also remember him in uh, James and the Giant Peach, stuff like that. A moment of silence for the late, great Peepop the Late. He will be missed. Mm -hmm. Also, another positive I have here is the music by John Williams. He does another amazing job, and it's not as iconic as the music in the first movie, mind you. I mean, the music he did for the first movie is just legendary status. But this is actually a really good still, too. I especially like the theme to this movie, and also all the jungle bits he does. It's something different, but also, you, you can tell it's Jurassic Park. So, I really like the music for this movie. I might actually have to revise some of the soundtracks, like, especially to the first two movies. Actually, some of the action sequences in this movie are actually pretty good, actually, and really intense, like, on the edge of your seat. Kudos to the people involved making these action sequences. My favorite action sequence in the entire movie would probably have to be when they're attacked by the Velociraptors, more so in the, you know, when they're trying to get, reach the chopper and stuff that, like that. characters that you're kind of not supposed to root for in these movies because they're the ones wanting to go to the island and document the dinosaurs make sure they're stabilized and stuff like that and so when it was made very clear in the first film that dealing with these dinosaurs in any compound city whatsoever is a stupid fucking idea and you have to be a stupid fucking idiot to do that and here we get some stupid fucking idiots here and you do some stupid stuff in this movie the more I think about it. So it's kind of a mixed bag with me on the characters here. Uh, there's some redeemable moments with these characters, like uh, Eddie Carr, he actually does sacrifice himself to save, uh, you know, the main cast and that, like, and, like, the main characters, so that's actually a very uh, honorable thing to mention, so. Uh, like he really tried to save them and he ended up giving his life to save them, so. So yeah, uh, there is some redeemable qualities with these characters and everything, so. Oh yeah, also another next one is the effects. Now like I said, these are really good effects. I just think they're kind of a bit of a downgrade from the first movie. Uh, nothing awful, but nothing as spectacular or groundbreaking as the effects of the first movie. Which is odd, because you would think after, as time goes on, the effects would start to get better and better. But this one just kind of seemed like a downgrade for some reason. Also, another mixed thing is the whole T-Rex rampaging through San, San Francisco. Well, actually, San Diego, my bad. I said San Francisco in the plot, but to be honest, it's just California, you know? Uh... So, I, you could see how I got the two cities confused, but it was cool to see a T-Rex rampaging through the city and everything like that. But, to me, it kind of doesn't fit with the rest of the movie. It's almost like they completely changed their original ending, and actually that is the case. They changed their original ending that they had in mind, I was thinking about. And then Steven Spielberg or someone came up with the idea to do, you know, basically Godzilla. In fact, there's even a scene where you see two uh, Japanese people running away from a T-Rex and they're basically saying Japanese, you know, like, I moved to this country to get away from this shit. It's basically referencing Godzilla, so that's basically what it is. It's just Godzilla. Yeah, it does feel out of place. I mean, it's awesome, but it does feel out of place. I would love to have a Jurassic Park movie where it takes place in the mainland and that like in the city and have it not feel out of place with the rest of the movie. And honestly for me that's uh, it with my mixed spots. Now let's go on to my negatives. I actually got none negatives I really, you know, are like things I absolutely hated in this movie. So actually let's just scratch this actually. 
So no negatives, let's just get them into my rating. So with that said, I'm gonna give The Lost World Jurassic Park a 4 out of 5 star. Honestly, this is pretty good. Not as good as the first movie, and I did have some issues in terms of like some stuff with character, like the writing for the characters and some decisions made in this movie, but overall it's a pretty fun movie actually. Before I go, I was watching, been watching for years the nostalgic review of this and I kind of did alter my opinion on this movie. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to get into this, I might as well go like come in with an open mind and everything again. Yeah, everything in Nostalgia Crick, I did get some of those things he said, but a lot of them, I think it was just him being negative for the sake of being negative. I find this to be a fun entry in the franchise. One of the things he definitely got wrong, which I forgot to mention in my positives, is that he said the pacing is so like slow and like, like just ugh. Honestly, for me, the pacing is actually pretty fast, actually. And moves by smoothly, actually. So, I don't know what he's talking about. And again, it's his opinion, so. So, that's it for this review. Thank you guys for watching. And it is absolutely impending that we work with the Costa Rican Department of Biological Preserve to establish a set of rules for conservation and preservation. These creatures require our absence to survive another round. And if we could only just step aside and trust in nature, I.